This is Hannibal here from the HannibalTV.com with multiple time WWE Tag Team Champion, former pro wrestling Noah Tag Team Champion now too. Or is it not former? Are you still Tag Team Champion? Maybe he'll let us know. Former Canadian Champion and uh, representing the East Coast with your, with your coffee mug there. Oh, did you read it? Yeah. East Coast, Daddy. One of the most famous uh, families in the East Coast, your family. Yeah, I guess. Oh. So are you a former NOAA Tag Team Champion, or do you still hold the titles? We had to relinquish the titles due to the, uh, the COVID-19. Because <clears throat> my, uh, my partner is in Mexico, and he can't get back into Japan. And now that I'm back home, I can't get back into Japan, so... But we'll be the number one contenders as soon as we uh, we're allowed back in. So, you were over there for what three or four months? Five. Five months. Wow. Yeah, man. How did yeah. you survive over there? I guess you're you're used to the culture by now. I've been going over there for thirteen years, man. It's like a second home. I'm used to it. I love it over there. Did your? I guess your wife couldn't come and visit you because of the whole lockdown situation. Yeah. Yeah. She was, well, she's got a really good government job over here now. So it's, it's all good. You got Skype, you know, yeah. After you're married 11 years, it's, you know, you're used to it. 11 years. That's gotta be 30 years in the wrestling business. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, uh, I seen Pat Patterson. Uh, it was like a couple of years ago. He came to one of our shows when me and Sly were tagging. He's like, Rene, why did you marry Chinese? I said, uh, Japanese, Pat, Japanese. And I said, if I would have married a white woman, I'd been divorced three times over by now. So, so you were kind of a big, uh, well, I agree with that. Uh, I met your wife uh, back when I wrestled you in yeah. Atlantic Grand Prix Wrestling. Yeah. And very nice lady. Yeah. I think you uh, you outdid yourself there. Oh, I'm lucky, dude. Lucky. She's, I don't know any other woman I would have been divorced. So how did this pro wrestling no ideal come about? You were wrestling for, what was it, uh, Wrestle 1 before that? Yeah. And then yeah. you made a surprise appearance? Yeah. Well, I went on over there. I met up with some of my, some of my friends and... Uh, they helped me get a, a new gig because Wrestle One now is, I think they fold it for a bit, maybe on a hiatus or whatever. So, yeah, I've got a lot of friends in Japan, a lot of friends, and they always rotate. You know, there's always different bookers and stuff. That, so I'm very fortunate that um, I've got a lot of friends. One of those friends is Masahiro Chono, who you sent me that video, the COVID-19 public uh, uh, awareness video from Japan uh, of you and Masa Chono. What was that all about? Was that something done through Noah or his his company? No, well, he has his own his own uh, YouTube channel, right? And then he said, well, I'll just come over and we'll just do this thing for Japan, right? Okay. So, uh, no, it's it was uh, it's good exposure. And uh, anytime I get a chance to hang out with him, man, I always do. And I spent a lot of the weekends when we were off and I had nothing to do. He said, oh, I'll just come over and stay at my house. So I'd stay at his house for the weekend, hang out with him and his kids and his wife. And just really, really good people, man. And you would have known him from the time that he worked for your dad, I guess? Yeah, I was four years old. And I still remember it. He remembers me, too. We were on Prince Edward Island playing soccer together. <laughs> And uh, watching him in the ring, even back then, he was only maybe 25, but he had the it factor, right? Awesome. So where where does Noah rank now compared to, let's say, All Japan? Because we know All Japan used to be number two, but I've heard that it's not doing as well as it has been. And Noah has had a bit of a resurgence in recent they'd be, years. They'd be number two right now. Okay. In Japan, then it'd be Noah. Yeah. Were you able to work out at the gym the whole time you were there? Was was the uh, the weight training still open for you? Yeah, well, they have their own their own facility, like their own dojo. 
so they had a full a full gym set up with the ring and a tanning bed and everything so it was like a, they put me up in my own apartment and it was like two minute walk to the so i still get my two workouts a day in and then sometimes I'd work out in the ring with the, the young boys and stuff. And now that you're back here, you're quarantined for, I guess, 10 days. Uh, this is probably the first time you've ever had 10 days off from the gym. Well, I got a stationary bike out on the porch. So I okay. still, uh, still get my cardio in. But uh, Is it your back porch or front porch? Front porch. Okay. Hmm. Yep. So if you live in, uh, in your town there in New Brunswick... It's uh, a common sight to see you out on the front porch. <laughs> <laughs> well, I live I live on the outskirts, dude. I like to keep myself, you know, away from. I'm not a people person. Right. Yeah. I have heard that uh, there are some East Coast promotions that are going to try and run. Mm. I know things are a little less strict there than here in Ontario. Mm. Um, do you see there being much success running during this time with a lot of people afraid of catching stuff? And uh, if I was a promoter, I, I, I not, I wouldn't want to risk it right now. It's too, I don't know. But then again, maybe people are tired of being. They want to go out and get entertained too. So I don't know. But I wouldn't risk it. Have you heard about Impact? I guess. They've applied for a loan between 150 grand and 350 grand to help really? uh, pay. Yeah, I guess you I haven't heard about it. They're like a billion dollar company. They're like, didn't they buy Access TV from Mark Cuban for like a couple hundred million? I don't know what the what the deal was, but apparently they have applied for a loan. The reason given was to pay 106 employees. Well, I mean, if they can get, like, free money, I guess that's smart business, right? I mean, yeah. right? Yes. A lot of people wanted to know all the time, and I already know the reason. It's all politics. Um, why we never have seen you. There's, like, five companies now running in North America. <laughs> and why, like, would you... Let's face it, you're the top five Canadian wrestlers, without question. Mm -hmm. I, I would consider myself an expert on wrestling in Canada, and you're definitely in the top five. But would mm -hmm. you say it's just politics? Why, like a Ring of Honor or an Impact or an MLW or AEW, for instance? Does okay, it Devin, you wrestling? like wrestling, right? You're like me. You love wrestling, right? Yeah. Can you watch North American wrestling? I cannot. I, I watched No Holds Barred the other night. So the <laughs> But I could not sit through two minutes of AEW. Well, I'm in the same boat. So if I cannot sit and watch the show, why would I want to work there? Especially when I have other options. Exactly. So there you go. Uh, I do very well where I'm at. Uh, I'm stabilized there. They like me there. No stress. All my bills are paid. So, you know, I, I didn't get into this to be a, a Hollywood actor like a lot of wrestlers these days or entertainers or storytellers, as you call them. Yeah. Well, they call themselves that. I'm not even joking. They do not want to be called wrestlers. Mm. I, I heard Vince McMahon say it himself. They're storytellers. Right. Right. And uh, I'm happy living in the Maritimes. I really do not want to move anywhere. <laughs> I'm next to my family. I'm very comfortable. So, yeah, good. If you now, want to catch me on uh, DDT Universe, uh, DDT that's where you can Universe. watch. That's where you can watch Pro Wrestling Noah. I think it's ten bucks a month, and you can watch all kinds of different uh, professional wrestling on there. Women's wrestling, multiple, um, multiple uh, men's wrestling, including Noah. So, if you want to check it out, go ahead. So you so, would have been over there when Hana Kimura passed away. Yeah. Yeah. That, whew, wow. And she was so good. I, I wasn't very familiar because I don't really watch women's wrestling, to be honest with you. But, of course, I clicked on some of her. She was talented and so beautiful. And it's just, just goes to show, man, some people can be real dickheads on, online, you know? Yeah. I know you don't pay that much attention to it. You're not online that much, but you do have a, 
a Twitter, I think, at real Rene Dupree. And yes. There's, there's what two E's on the end of Dupree for people yes. that don't know. Yes. And you are on Facebook, but you don't accept everybody. No. What do you I've think? Got about, I mean, I got about uh, 300 friend requests that I, sorry, I don't want to add you. Sorry. <laughs> there are some, what I don't get is the people that on Facebook, they'll send you the friend request, but then they'll start chirping you and like uh, trolling you on your own posts. And it's like, why did you send me the friend request? I don't even know who you are. And then you're going to like insult me. It's like, I don't get those people. There's a lot of uh, bored people out there, I guess. Miserable, miserable people. What do you think about now? We, we hear about the storytelling, but it seems like with this Drew McIntyre guy, Keith Lee does it, Randy Orton does it, Edge does it. It seems like in every media interview that WWE storytellers do these days, they're continuously breaking kayfabe. Like, they want to just constantly remind us in every single interview they do that they're just friends in the back, which as you know, they're not, it's a cutthroat business. Mm. But like, why do you think, do you think this is mandated by WWE that they want the wrestlers talking like this? It would have to be. I mean, they control everything. You know what I mean? Those guys, they're, I know I was there. You're like a puppet. It's like, dee, 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 dee. so, but then again, they're, they're exposed in everything. And how's, how is their TV viewership? They're getting the 0.4s and 0.5s for, for a long time now, despite having no sports competition. Lowest in history? Yes. Okay. Lower than the TL Hopper days and the Goon days. Well, that was quality entertainment. Yeah. Steel Hopper. <laughs> Have you ever met him? No. He was a dirty white boy, right? Yeah. Yeah, no. Oh. Then they had uh, Jim Nighthart as who. Who, yes. During that time, and Alex Porto. I don't know what happened to him. Did you ever meet him uh, over the years? I think, doesn't he have a promotion in Florida? I think, I he think so. But he was from Quebec originally or something. Uh, so he must have been pretty good if he's from Quebec, right? <laughs> I don't know. I think Quebec, unfortunately, they've killed they've it has the potential, I think, of any province of being able to sustain their own territory, but the quality 100%. the quality just isn't there, unfortunately. You just have to have the right minds and uh the right money behind it. That's all. There are so, there are some good wrestlers though. Don't get me wrong. We know Jeremy Prophet, uh, Carl LeDuc, mm. PCO, for instance, isn't too bad either. Mm. Well, honestly, I think some of the greatest the greatest um, minds for wrestling and some of the greatest workers came from Quebec. I mean, Pat Patterson was a very good worker and a great mind. Uh, you remember Phil Lafon? Yes. Well, that's who Dean Malenko and John Laurinaitis stole all their finishes from in Japan. He's the guy. He was so good, and they never got credit for it. But he's the guy that, <clears throat> and that's when. So they that's why he hates Johnny Ace, huh? I didn't meet him because Phil Lafon lives in Alberta now, doesn't he? Right. He hated Johnny Ace. I do remember. Well, wouldn't you? He ripped off all his finishes and went there and made millions. And then when fucking uh, he needs a job, he doesn't get one. Like, seriously. All those great All Japan finishes with the tag finishes, That's that was all Phil LaFont, dude. And he learned from, like, obviously, like, Bobby Jagger. I know all the history. He learned from Bobby Jaggers and stuff. But, no, all those great finishes were Phil LaFont. And uh, so many guys ripped up. Rob Van Dam stole a lot of Phil LaFont stuff. And he never gets credit for it, and he should. Who do you pattern your style after over in Japan? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I stole a lot from uh, Minoru Suzuki just because he beat the shit out of me so much. I feel like I, I've earned it. <laughs> uh, Masa Funaki. Uh, I don't know. I'm just a wrestling fan, dude. I always have been. Just like you, so he just comes natural, I guess. You know, I like to do the Macho Man elbow for a finish. Uh, Rick Martel as a baby face, Terry Funk 
as a baby face and heel. I don't know. Have you heard the reason why Rick Martel is so soured on the wrestling business? I don't necessarily blame him, but apparently he wants nothing more to do with the wrestling business. Well, it's probably the same reason why a lot of the old timers don't like it. It's, yeah. it's not wrestling anymore. It's not the same business. It's completely different now. Martell and Piper, they were, uh, they were really good buddies uh, mm. when they worked the East Coast Territory, weren't they? Mm. Yeah, I think they worked for um, my father's opposition. It was uh, international. Oh, J.J. Dillon's group. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 <clears throat> they lost a lot of money, admittedly, I believe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, sometimes politics... Uh, you know, work in your favor. My father had a lot more connections as far as television and people in high positions of power. And that's why he won that war, you know. Do you think this lockdown is ultimately going to be better for the indies? For instance, WWE hardly goes to the East Coast anymore. But now with this lockdown, I don't see them going there anytime soon. So maybe when it ends... People will be kind of starving for some wrestling action and maybe the Indies is going to be the only place they can get it. Maybe. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. I hope so. Yeah. The unfortunate part of WWE, as I find myself when I'm going around putting up posters, people don't like the TV product and they think that that trickles down to all levels of wrestling. So they actually make fun of you when you're going around putting up posters now. I know. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the young people, it's, as Rip Rogers would call it, as seen on TV, they just want to copy the stuff they see on TV and they do it on the ring. You know, a lot of guys won't even have real gear. They just have T-shirts and shorts and kick pads. and That's what they see on TV, right? Yeah, that is becoming the real gear. Definitely. Right. That wasn't like that when you started. Uh, you started at, what, 14, but but you looked like a man. You looked not much different than you do today. <laughs> <I know. You're> <laughs> but you haven't aged. You looked old at, like, 13 and 14. Right. But somehow you look the same age. You're blessed. Your hair didn't go gray and you didn't go bald. I know. <laughs> I'm lucky. I get my dad's genetics. My dad's 85. He still looks like he's 60. Many people have told me they think you should do uh, a Gaston gimmick off of Beauty and the Beast, if you've ever seen that character. Lillian Garcia would tell me that all the time. That looks like oh, really? Gaston. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you look like him. I kind of want to do, um, you know, uh, Men Without Hats, the safety yes. hats? You know the guy in the video, he has the hot blonde and the midget? Yeah. That's my new gimmick, dude. That would be awesome. I would love <laughs> Weren't they from Montreal, too? Yeah! Yeah, yeah they were. Men without hats. Safety dance. Interesting. If I could ever uh, find a midget to do the safety yeah, dance. Long, dude. Yeah, that would be that would be cool. And wow. we know you got the voice for it. We've seen... Uh, I don't think they're up anymore, but a couple times you sent me some karaoke. Yeah, man. Oh, You've yeah. embraced the Japanese culture. With uh, Saki and karaoke. Yeah, but the karaoke, all the karaoke's were closed this time, right? So yeah. I couldn't go out. So I did, uh, I did apartment karaoke by myself in my room. And last thing, I guess you're almost embracing the, the hardcore Japanese wrestling. You sent me that picture of all those sticks in your face. <laughs> <laughs> what, the, what the hell was up with that? It was a sponsored dinner. I was about... 15 highballs highballs like is like japanese tea mixed with whiskey i drank 15 of them and then there was toothpicks i figured i'd entertain the entertain the people that are with me the guy that looked like he was 19 and you're telling me he's almost 60 he was 52 wow 52 bro i'm That's telling crazy. you they got the best genetics ever well thanks uh, for filling us in i hope you and dr wagner jr one of the big stars in Mexico. That's pretty cool. That uh, oh yeah, yeah. Well, his 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 dad is, I'd say, in the top three, definitely top three. Wagner, and then it's in Mexico it goes by like it's a family thing, right? So he's he's gonna guaranteed international superstar. So it's 
it's good to be connected with them, you know? I know you don't want to go down there now with all the, all the outbreak, but now that you're teaming with him, once things settle down, could we see that team in Mexico? 110%. Interesting. That would be cool to see. Well, I'm glad to see you're doing well. Thanks uh, for catching up with us. Real Rene Dupree on Twitter, Facebook. If you're a hot girl, you're gonna you'll agree to. <laughs> but one of the legitimate accounts, not the uh, not these not- supermodels that send. What what do these people get out of those fake Facebook accounts, anyways? Uh, with some some guys, probably their credit card numbers. True, and uh, DDT TV. People can check out. Your recent Noah matches on there, Pro Wrestling Noah. You're going to be back, I guess, when all this is done. As soon as uh, as soon as the borders are cleared, I'm back there full time. Who's the champion there now? Go Shiozaki. Uh, what would you say to him to close this off? If you Shiozaki. were going to, yeah, I'd say you're tough, but you know, Rene Dupree. That title's coming to me. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at the Hannibal TV for instant updates.